she said it because of his wet blanket energy. <laughs> Unhinged. Hey guys, welcome to She's All Batch, and we're going to be recapping Hometowns, baby! Hometowns, baby! And we have someone very special to help me recap because Jackie's not here with me. It is Dave Neal, host of the Twice Daily Pop Culture Podcast, The Rush Hour with Dave Neal. Dave Neal. Thank you for coming on She's All Batch. Well, of course. You know, I'm, I'm the closest guy you could find that has female hair. This is... Exactly. I'm growing it out to look like your co-host. Yeah, you look just like Jackie. I almost didn't even... I didn't I even notice. Done, I would have done the millennial comb over thing you've got going on. Let me get, let me do that for you for all those that I, are Isn't watching. it cool? Honestly, the millennial comb over, can we not call it the comb over? That makes it not as cool. It's a side part. I think side parts are going to make a comeback. This whole middle part thing, I can't. I'm, I'm I over don't it. I do trends. I'm past it. Neither I do my, I. I know my music. I know Chapel Roan. That makes me hip. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I don't know. Jackie brought her i thought it was a guy jackie brought her up the other day on the podcast i'm like i don't even know who that is you don't know yeah you're like who's Chappelle? Rowan? well you and i are the same you're the we're the same age right or i think you're a little older well easy does it okay you're awesome. like six months older i think uh 1985 baby the good oh yeah you're way older than me yeah i know Not, i know skin's looking okay with this lighting thank you for coming and filling in jackie's shoes we are actually recapping the night of we did this last week, but we usually recap like the morning after. It's got fresh energy. We just watched um, yeah. a pretty good episode. I mean, you know, I think it's, you know, there's there's those chaotic uh, audience members that want like drama and craziness. And it's like, I want warm apple pie. I just love. Oh, my God. We are. What? Yeah. I want the apple pie like burning my mouth. I don't the, want. You know what? I'm the part of the millennials out there that are getting free therapy by watching grown men hug each other. And I'm like, why mm. couldn't my dad do that? You know? <laughs> like, seriously, yeah. it's like these are the men and, and women that I think they just show that they are adapting to a world where they're, you know, feeling their emotions. And I'm like, not in my family. So overall, you've been really liking this season, even with the lack of drama. Yeah. Who needs okay. it? Who needs the drama? You do. You need the drama, not me. Yeah. You know, no, I, I do. You, I saw you in Vegas. I know you're all about the drama. I'm all about the drama. <laughs> Historically, hometowns are my least favorite episode. I don't really like having to learn the family members. I don't usually care about who's who. And I also don't like that like the cast doesn't really interact with one another. But I will say this hometown episode was actually... it exceeded my expectations. I actually was more entertained than I thought I would be. Well, yeah, what you get on the normal bachelor, like the younger years, is you get parents that are not wanting to be there. They're, they want to support their kid, but also like, are you sure? You know, they're grilling. When you get the golden version, you have their kids are just excited for them. It's like, who cares? Mm -hmm. Who cares if you make the wrong choice? You're on, yeah. you're on final act. Have fun. Yeah. I will say like, there's a lot of stuff that's very predictable though. I mean, I think just we'll get into each one but like just jumping to the end it was so incredibly obvious who was going home and who was staying that now I feel like I know the exact lineup of the rest of the season though like I know who's winning who's coming in second who's coming in third do you Maybe, well you but, know spoilers actually right well you hear so many spoilers that you kind of don't even know what to expect anymore so I I am good at like reporting on a spoiler and just forgetting because it's you know happens so long ago but mm -hmm. I uh you know when we saw the the preview for the finale I mean it looks like there's going to be some heavy emotions there so they'll, they'll be, you know, they'll be, you know, Joan's afraid she's going to be, you know, left alone after this thing. And I'm like, look, Joan, join the company of every other bachelor and bachelorette that didn't last. Like, yeah, you know, don't get your uh, don't set the bar too high here. Totally. Yeah. So we start with Guy, Lake Tahoe. What do we think of this date? I usually judge the date primarily on location. Because really? you can you can do with someone who has an annoying family member, but there's nothing worse than going somewhere like that you don't want to be. And mm. Lake Tahoe is one of the most beautiful places in the world. Have you been? I mean, there no. it's oh my gosh, come on. It is sorry. <laughs> uh, they have a lake there. I mean, it is really nice. You know, skiing in the winter, the summers, you're boating. It's it's mm. beautiful up there. I mean, it's a little over trafficked, but uh anyway, so that alone, it's uh upper class you know you got to kind of be mm. somebody to be up there there's you know it's 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 a nice it's a nice spot so for that reason alone i think you it's were a, digging it well because it is where is she based out of is she santa barbara or she's she's california right i think so 
I also never pay attention to where they're from. I don't even know where Lake Tahoe is. Like, what state is it? I think <laughs> it's six hours, I believe, or six hours or so north of Los Angeles. So it's that does nothing California. for me, Dave. What state it's is it? In California. Oh, it is in California. I thought it was out. in a completely different state. I was thinking like Minnesota. I don't know why. Yeah, no, this is not one of the Great Lakes. This is <laughs> California. This is one of those socialist lakes they've got okay. in California. Uh, it's beautiful. It is absolutely yeah. beautiful. And, you know, like I said, it's it's just a nice destination to go to. So if you're going to marry yeah. somebody, you might as well enjoy where they live. It'll make you might get Might as well sit on a lake. There you go. She could have sat on the lake with Gary. Doesn't he live by a lake in Indiana? No, he's on some dusty cornfield in the middle of nowhere. I'm pretty sure there's a lake I'm telling you, the only reason I don't even remember who Gary cho chose. It's I've I've wiped it's Teresa, Teresa Nist. Teresa Love goes there, her. and she's probably like, "Wait a second, he lives three hours from the airport." Then I, no, 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 like no one's yeah. got, who's got time for that to go to. Love doesn't field. conquer all. After no, all, love, love has to still drive you there, and no one's doing yeah, that. But exactly. at least Lake Tahoe is one of the most beautiful places in the world, I think. Um, it's no Vegas, but close second. Well, I'd say. I mean, I'll tell you what, though, if you watch Vanderpump, uh, Jax, uh, or, you know, they did go to Lake Tahoe. They did a whole episode there last oh, season. Oh, they did. Yes, yeah. they did. So I know when Jax. You, when you were speaking ditching, of Vegas, <laughs> when you were ditching me for Jax, <laughs> you're um, going to break that up. <laughs> I yeah. Was, uh, clean, I was cleaning up the, uh, what is it called? The, uh, the, the, uh, the back room where you guys all vomited or whatever happened. That was, oh my gosh, Dave. Okay. I get pinned for ditching you for Jax where I had two accomplices who don't get, don't get thrown under the bus. With I, me heard for Courtney, some I heard Cor Courtney Robertson wasn't willing. I heard she was held hostage. <laughs> you don't believe that, right? I'm going to send this to Courtney. How do you think we got Jax's number? I got, we got to do what we got to do, Dave. Um, it's this, it's Sin City. But anyway, um, <laughs> Something was a red flag to me with this guy thing. Um, so I think guys coming in second. I think that's a pretty obvious prediction. But when they met the family, she immediately starts talking about Charles. And like, I get like his like Charles's connection to Guy and how Guy helped Charles figure out like what happened with his wife. And it's just like, that was a great story. But why is it relevant to you guys? I just felt like it very much pointed out that they may not be as close as we are being led to believe, because why would that even come up? Yeah. And I'm not saying Guy is too pretty to settle down, but he's kind of a pretty boy, you know? He's pretty. He's so very good looking. Recently retired, high achieving doctor. I mean, and again, I'm not I'm not ageist. My wife is in the relative age of me. But I'm just seeing guy with a 40 year old. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing guy with a girl who ditches her friends to hang with him at a club somewhere. That's that's, uh, the, vibe, that's the vibe I'm getting. Well, when he gets sent home second, he can go do that. But not yet. On a scale from one to 10 of being absolutely in love, he's a 9.5. I don't buy this. I don't buy pretty much any connection other than chalk. I mean, I'm with you. Like, I, I think he's the type of guy you hang out. You have good chemistry. He knows how to read the room. But, you know, if something better comes along, I mean, this is why I'm this is why I want to see a mixed season of Bachelor in Paradise, because I'm telling yeah. you, you got a couple Victoria Fuller types that are going to be with a guy like there is enough. There's enough older Bachelor alumni and younger Golden alumni that I think I think we might have some inter uh, mingling happening. Like who would like like. Just, just real quick, who would Pascal be good with of the Bachelor alums? You know, like Caitlin Bristow's like, not. I mean, I know she's not. She's taken, but like that's that's the age range. You know, late thirties to sixty. Demi, Burnett, and Pascal. I could see that. There you go. But yeah, so he like cries to his sisters and says that um, he's like so happy that he can fall in love again. And he tells Joan that he's fallen for her quote big time. So this is our first like proclamation of the episode. Yeah, I don't buy it on the normal season, but these seasons are sped up. I think it's a, I think they get to hometowns a little quicker. So it's like, all right, I, I get, you know, no one's I don't think anyone said I love you, sure, but also, mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah, I'm I I I I feel your cynicism that it's not exact like this might not work outside of the show. I almost even feel like Jones reaction a lot of the times when sitting with the guys outside of chalk she seems just very disinterested like her face isn't like the look of love to me the whole yeah. season she's tough to read she's tough to yeah read to me. 
Uh, she 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 has a strong poker face, if you will. Yeah. You know, guy was my um, name in French class. Uh, you you had to pick a name for French class in eighth grade, and I chose Guy because it sounded cool. But in French, uh, the accent is actually pronounced Guy, and it's just mm. Guy, Guy is the the least cool name you could have. So just a oh, I love that fun fact. Yeah. So they call me Dave the Guy. So here Dave I am. Dave the Guy. Well, I was in Italian class, and we got are. give. Well, yeah, and then we got given names, but I just got Stefania. So, so yeah, you were Lady Gaga of that Italian class. Yeah, well, her name. You know, her name is Stephanie, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, is that why you said it? You're the Lady Gaga of Bachelor Nation. Oh my God! Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we move over to Pascal's date in Chicago, which is in Illinois. Wow. <laughs> I knew that off the top of my head. Her vibe with him is so much more fun. Like, I think her, like, maybe her feelings are stronger with Guy, but with Pascal, it's more, I feel like she enjoys herself more. He's, I think he allows, uh, there's something about Frenchmen that I very much love. I studied there and I have French relatives and there is something about the, the, the way they take care of themselves that we almost shame ourselves for in our country, you know, cause mm. people are looking at guy going, Oh geez, this prissy man. And I'm like, man, I would love to, if I would love it if I took care of my nails half as well as he does, you know, yeah. like, he's a, you know, that if you're, if you're the per, the type of personality that enjoys that, then he's a good match. If you're the type who just wants your guy to put on a flannel and, you know, not spend as much time on his hair as you, yeah. then he would annoy you. So he's just like a, he's a strong choice, but it mm -hmm. seems that it seems that she really likes him. Why not? He's successful. Um, he's self-made. Uh, he, you know, that's that's what else would you want in a partner for your final, you know, your final go? I don't mean final go in like a morose way. It's like, all right, you yeah. don't want you don't want a partner who didn't have a four hundred one k, so they were driving Uber. You know what I mean? You're sixty. Like, you want to go travel. You want to go to the Great Lakes of California or wherever you end mm -hmm. up. Right, and it's bonus that you can get free like beauty services. Absolutely. Because you're with Pascal. I really liked seeing his salon. I actually forgot that he has a salon and it was cool seeing that. Like, do we know if he actually does like the hair though and I think all the services? The, my my guess is he's like a celebrity clientele. Like he's the he owner. Probably he probably does selective haircuts. Have you ever had a haircut from a man before? Yes. For, yeah. Have you no have you had one from a straight man? No, <laughs> I, I only no. ask because I love getting my hair cut because, you know, one of my love languages is qual is a touch because men, men, we don't get touched enough, I feel like in life. So if okay. anyone ever sees me out there, go ahead and give me a good squeeze. Okay. Uh, but there was something that's it's a very nice to, to connect even with someone platonically when they're like rubbing your hair and, and washing your hair. It's very oh intimate. My gosh. Isn't it amazing? I, yes, I love getting my hair washed. Why do you have a guy do your hair? Do you have a gi do your hair? <laughs> <laughs> he he does it in a gi, which is a, that's a pun. It's a whole thing. No, uh, I would, I would, I'm not saying this, like I'm not homophobic. I would feel just as good if a male did it. Like I've, I've gotten massages from men that feel great, but there's, there's something about the, and again, I'm sure a stylist doesn't feel this. I'm sure a hairdresser, I'm sure they, they're so used to it. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of like the dancing with the stars comparison where a lot of people don't get this personal touch so that it is a big deal. So yeah, when I, I like clear my schedule, when I go get my haircut and they're like, do you want a shampoo beforehand? And I'm like, you bet your yeah. before I do. You get down to those roots, ma'am. I'll pay extra. Just do it for an hour. Give me an hour. I know. Can you, go. can you pay extra? I wish you could. I'd be like, dude, they'll, they're going to kick me out of the salon. Yeah. To do that well especially if you're saying it's your love language <laughs> they're well, like Dude, <laughs> sir i'm just washing your hair <laughs> they're like yeah this is my lunch break no i know because i'm new to tennessee so i've been going to this one salon and i've sort of been auditioning new ladies of the salon and each time mm. i get paired with someone else and uh, no offense to them but each time something's off like i haven't got my fix and in la i had my lady it was mm. we, good we we just knew i showed up i winked and she just she just started <laughs> trimming you know what i mean i yeah, don't have yeah. that now Right. Well, it takes time. And hopefully none of those ladies are watching because they'll be very offended. So on this date with Pascal, so Pascal opens up about his past relationships. This is kind of like bleeding over from last week's episode when she was a little upset with Pascal for not like being more forthcoming in the group date. And he was saying like, that's not his style. I guess he was giving a little more context that it was a past relationship that was semi-recent that he was really hurt from. She did say though, it takes a lot to open up your heart and I'm not sure mine is completely there. And I made note of that because like, I don't really get the excuse she gave Mark last week. Like 
I think Mark should have went home and I think there wasn't a connection there. But I think her reasoning saying like he's not ready, he's not far enough on his journey yet to be ready for this. Like, I don't know if Joan's ready either. I feel like they're pretty neck and neck in terms of like where they stand. Isn't it wild to think, because I, I briefly met your husband, good looking dude, very nice guy. Oh, Isn't it just, it's so it's so cryptic to think this way, but the Golden Bachelor series makes you think about loss that way. And it's heartbreaking. Mm. Who, I mean, who in their right mind would be ready? I don't know if you saw Michael yeah. A's story from Katie's season, but I was watching YouTube videos of his wife, you know, ringing the bell when she was cured of cancer just to, yeah. just to die several months later. Absolute like a heartbreak. So when you watch this show, you go, who the hell would be ready? And if someone says they are ready, I kind of feel like maybe they're just not accessing their emotions. Definitely. I think Joan, you know, she had that horse riding date where I think she realized, Oh man, um, you know, there is still a lot to uncover, but that's life. There's always a new layer to uncover when you're yeah. done, you die. So I don't know. I don't blame her if she's not ready. I couldn't imagine. And I just, you know, it's, I, 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 I have these thoughts all the time. These, uh, what do they call them? Like intrusive thoughts of just like, how the hell would I go on? You know what I mean? To be clear, I'm not like knocking Joan saying she's not ready. I didn't understand why she told Mark that he wasn't ready as the excuse. Totally. We have this whole theory, Jackie and I, that like, you know, she had to let him go regardless because they want him to be the golden bachelor and blah, blah, blah. But I just thought that was a weird way to let him go. She should have just said, you know, the connection wasn't there because I think to say you're not ready when I don't know if she's fully ready either was just weird to me. Yeah, it. I was thinking the same thing. It, it could be a possible edit for a future storyline. It's like if the guy's going to go home anyway, you might as well say a few mm. things there. Um, but yeah, I mean... I think Mark might be too young to be the next Golden Bachelor. I mean, he's he's only in his he's like what fifty seven. Yeah. So I mean, what I I would love him. I absolutely love the Anderson family. Kelsey is my new favorite. I mm -hmm. think my new favorite person in Bachelor Nation. I yeah. think she's. I just absolutely love them. And I think it just comes down to the fact that we got to hear their story of losing Kelsey's mom and his wife, and you just get to hear this heartbreaking story. So yeah. I would love to see Mark. I would I would love to continue following that family in their pursuits. But um yeah, Joan, I mean, look, yeah, she's always gonna I mean, it sounds like she really had a had a strong love. And I definitely right. think on Gary's season, part of her leaving the show was like finding an excuse to leave. Um, you know, because she could have come back if she wanted to. So Well, yeah, just I mean, like Chalk left for a more serious reason and he came back within the same episode and Joan just left to help her daughter. I guess maybe the daughter needed more help and she couldn't come back, but did the daughter? I, thought, I don't know. It didn't sound that pressing. Was her it? daughter had a baby, right? Yeah. Again, maybe. So, I don't know. I just I get it. You know, it's like you're a it's a tough, it's a tough show for people whose main job is to be the matriarch or patriarch. It's a tough show. Yeah. It's like people rely on you. I get it. Yeah. So this is the hometown date where we hear the line that was used in the promo from last week. And it's Pascal's daughter. And in the promo from last week, she says, he's not going to pick you. But in reality, the line that she said is, I really don't think he's not going to pick you. <laughs> and last week we said, we're like, we're going to make note of this. I'm going to cut to last week's clip. Oh. Also with the he's not going to pick you. I also wouldn't be surprised if like that is an out of context sentence for so, like. Yeah. And so then I was saying to him that he or like then my mom said to me, he's not going to pick you about my boyfriend, which is how I'm applying this to this situation. Yeah. that he will pick you or like something right. ridiculous like that. We're like, we know that it's not. She doesn't really say that. First of all, it doesn't even make sense. Like, yeah, you need like a meme of Edward Scissorhands just editing, just like gone. No chance. OK, you guys know, obviously, I love saving money. Literally, who doesn't? But also, as much as I love saving money, I'm also incredibly lazy. And so if it's a situation where I'm going to have to jump through a million hoops to save a couple dollars, 
Nine times out of 10, I'm probably not going to bother and I'm just going to eat the cost. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for just $15 a month with the purchase of a three month plan, I was incredibly skeptical. But guys, it turns out it really is that easy to get wireless for $15 a month. So to get started, you can go to mintmobile.com slash she's all batch. And there you'll see right now all three month plans are only $15 a month, including the unlimited plan, which is amazing. All plans come with high speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and you can bring your phone number along with you as well as your existing contacts, which I know is always such a pain. Like in 2024, no one should be transferring over their contacts individually. That's absurd. So find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash she's all batch that's mintmobile.com slash she's all batch cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash she's all batch $45 $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three month plan only, speeds slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan, additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. Uh, so we end the date, and Joan says that she's nervous that Pascal's walls are up. And I feel she seems more into it than he is to her. But I also feel like it could be him just having his walls up, like he said. Yeah, she said a few different things that made it look like. I'll put it this way. If he's not the winner, I if I were the winner, I would be a little like, oh boy, because she said a few of those things that was like, like he's sexy. Yeah. Like she, I mean, he's, he's up there. He's, he's high up on the list and I get it. I mean, yeah, the guys look, people are always, everyone's attracted to something different. Right. But there, a, a big attraction is a successful person. He's really successful. He takes care of himself. He's got a French mm-hmm. accent. It's like, come on, like the guy's a catch. <laughs> What's not to love? No, I, I agree. We move over to another hometown date, also in Chicago, Illinois, and that's Jordan. And I haven't been, not like I'm not on Team Jordan. It's just I'm so indifferent with Jordan because I haven't bought it since the very beginning. He's, he's a floater to me. And he proved that in this episode. I just wasn't invested in this hometown date because I don't believe there's actually anything between them. I tend to agree, but I do like him. I mean, I could see a world where we possibly don't know him that well. Like it might be that he's not that attracted to Joan and there's just not too much there. But Mm -hmm. with the right cast, I could see him as the golden bachelor. Dave. I could. For real. You think he's good looking? Um, I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, don't. I don't comment on people's looks. That's a rule uh, I have. Well, attraction. I mean, I don't, you know, they're all. Well, okay. what if my answer is no? That's why I'm not commenting. Okay, if it was okay. yes, I would just say right. it. I mean, I'm, I'm weird when I think someone's, I think uh, maybe, uh, you know, I just, I see him as in like, he's in really good shape and he's got a good hairline still. And, uh, you know, Chicago, they're, they're kind of fun ball buster types. <laughs> You know, like they said, maybe maybe he's not that serious. But, you know, look, you know, I'm always I'm always like, look, can you fault someone for not being that serious two weeks in? You know, it's like, all right, maybe, maybe, you know, I don't think he would go on the show if he wasn't, you know, pursuing this. But at the same time, Jones Jones not choosing a guy from Chicago like that's far away. That's several time zones away from from where she's from. I'm going to look up where she's from. California, we decided, right? Right by Lake Tahoe. No, well, if it's Santa Barbara, it's not by Lake Tahoe. Oh, we got to get you oh. a map. Same, I mean, same state though. It's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they should do like more Let's Love see. Is Blind stuff with the Golden series. Like, I think they should all be in the same city. I yeah, don't get why I mean, they don't do that. Oh wait, here it says she's from Maryland. Well, if she's from Maryland, where is she that, living currently? Though she that yeah, may be where she originated. Yeah. Okay, I'll figure that out. Uh, but okay. yeah. I think it would be very hard to cast regionally just because, well, maybe now that it's been out for a few seasons, it would be easier, but like love is blind. It makes sense. Every 25 year old with abs is like dying to go on, you know, a show. So do you know who was uh, casting with love is blind from the bachelor franchise, but ended up going with bachelor? Uh, Give me a hint. He's a twin. Oh, uh, Noah or the brother. Aaron. Aaron? Aaron. Okay. I interviewed Aaron. Uh, I interviewed Noah and Abigail, and Noah was telling us how Aaron got on. He's like he was actually interviewing with like a few different places, including Love Is Blind, and then went with Bachelor. Oh, interesting! So and he was that- destined for reality TV fame, one way or another. 
Yeah, how'd that work out for him? Um, you know what's funny is I was going to interview Noah when I was driving across the country and I was driving through Oklahoma, which when you drive through, it's Route 40, so you're going through Oklahoma City. And he's like, Dave, you know I live in Tulsa. And I just like assumed, just like you assumed California is all the same. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just swing up to Tulsa. It was, yeah, like no it was like two and a half hours north. And I was like, never mind, Noah, you're not that big of a get. Uh, oh. God bless you. Well, no, he was, he's so good. I love him though. I love He's Noah. so funny. Cute couple. They no, are. so I had they, uh, I had my like, uh, you know, a 50 yard uh, moving van truck. I had a, like an 18 wheeler I was driving. So, oh, so that's yeah, not really, that would have cost me like an arm and a leg to go True. off the beaten path. Yeah. No offense, Noah. Next time, yeah. if you're a little Next closer. Time. Yeah. <laughs> where are we? Oh, so Jordan, we like start off the date and like we're hearing things like he's not going to get there. He he has his wall up the most. I feel like they're just making it so obvious once again that like he's the bottom that it just to me, it was like, OK, tell me Jordan's going home without telling me. Well, how did he make it that far then? You know, I don't know. Like I don't think he should have. Then she really didn't like some of these other guys. Well, I thought Jonathan for sure was going to top four. I actually think Jonathan's the only guy that can give Mark a run for his money for Golden Bachelor. Great story, too. I mean, yeah, it's just mm. sweet, sweet guy. Now, I have it here that Joan lives in Maryland, so it completely changes everything for me. Chicago is, oh, I mean, relatively close. It's a it's a flight, but it's it's not as far. Oh, OK, good. Glad we cleared that up. But then she's not close to guy on the lake right yeah now that's very far but it's lake tahoe so it's a right and then you want to be there right if you live near like i'm from i'm from new england baby i'm from newport rhode island it's a beautiful i can i can pull my wife there my wife's from northern kentucky you know what they have in northern kentucky it's near cincinnati that's their biggest claim is they're near another state's you know what i mean god bless everyone in northern kentucky but i've had enough skyline chili i'm blowing out the bathroom because (laughs) they got nothing else to do but eat skyline chili and drink coke zeros Okay, you don't want to visit. Sounds like fun. Why? You're gonna. I probably have listeners from Kentucky. You can't They'll just agree. write everyone no, off. No, 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 not Kentucky. I love you guys. Northern Kentucky. Okay? Oh, Northern. Love you guys too. <laughs> they're gonna write in and they're gonna go. Yeah, you're right. We got nothing but a car dealership and a couple fast food joints. Cincinnati. Nick Lachey likes one of the sports teams on Cincinnati. Well, you know, what are the... met, you know, I met Nick Lachey in Cincinnati. No he, way. He, you're not gonna believe this. He had a bar called the Lachey's, and I was like, what a coincidence. I'm, I'm not kidding. I go to the bartender and I go, is Nick ever here? And he goes, he's around the corner. I go, you're pulling my chain. He said, go check it out. So my wife, Tasha and her sister, Chelsea, uh, you know, they're fangirling. I was like, let's go. And then they're like, all right, fine, we'll go. And then we go around the corner. I go up to Nick and they stop like 10 feet behind me because they got scared. And I was like, yeah, Nick, I live in LA. Uh, we started talking and we ended up, he was bombed. We talked for like 10, 15 minutes and then he had to leave. And then I saw there was like a line of women that wanted to talk to him. They were all waiting to talk to him. And I just like, I don't know if I cut the line or just walked in, but that that um, that bar, uh, the manager of that bar got shot in the head, survived, but the bar closed down. So you that can fa- day, not, no, not that. Day. Oh, it's like, that is a fun filled day it for you. Wild, I mean, I know it's a wild Jesus. story. I had to end it somewhere, but that's true. That's what happened. So he no longer has the bar. He was actually I mean, <sighs> we don't need to get into a Nick Lachey fan club, but I do have a Lachey podcast, uh, the Lachey hour. I do it twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I always loved Nick Lachey until he got a little, I don't know. I don't like, I don't really no, like I don't. him was blind, but hey, I don't, you know, I don't blame him for cashing that paycheck. No, we don't like him. And I forget why, uh, to be honest. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> not, I don't, I don't have good vibes for him from him. I don't really get why. I don't remember why. Well, you though. know why I don't like him? I don't mm. like the fact that they were judging people for saying love isn't blind when they both married an attract it's like your wife married a boy band member and you married jessica simpson and then Alyssa Mal- whatever whoever that whatever her name is you know Van- vanessa vanessa whatever okay. manilo i think Manil- right yeah whatever totally different person but it's fine yeah. they got married in lake tahoe but um <laughs> any anyhow i'm just like well love is not blind as the show as the quote-unquote experiment has proven attraction mm-hmm. is a very important part of a relationship now it doesn't mean that's everything but it is a it is part of the the whole kitten caboodle i did meet nick lachey as well and i felt like he was a lot smaller in person that's you my gotta story be, you got to be under 510 to be a boy band member oh really it's the one of the main requirements yeah yeah, I was very surprised at how um, small he was because on Newlyweds, he seemed to tower over Jessica Simpson. And now I just wonder how short is Jessica Simpson? Isn't it funny? She became like a bajillionaire from selling some shoes. Like, Yeah, and her. she deserves it. I'm Never so happy for her. 
Absolutely. That's why. That's why I don't like Nick Lachey. I feel like he was not good to Jessica. There you go. Yeah. All Justice right. Well, for back. Jessica. <laughs> Justice for Jess. And back to the recap. Back to Jordan. Speaking of people, I'm not a huge fan of. Oh, so when Joan is talking to Jordan's uh, son, I think Joan says. Two of the men that I have are very open and ready to commit. And then I have your dad and another man. And I'm like, <laughs> once again, tell us that Jordan's not going the distance without telling us. It's just like over and over and over. Yeah, well, I think that was maybe the final straw to nudge him to to like, hey, you know, spell it out for me. And he mm. didn't take the bait. So that was it. Yeah. What was weird, though, is like, I feel like there was no like emotional connection, but I feel like the kiss that she gave him at the car was more intense than a lot of kisses that I've seen on this show. I don't want to lose all of your uh, your boomer listeners, but do don't old, do, oh, <laughs> do older people have they normalized kissing on the mouth more? I, I don't know. Like I'm I'm a, I'm very young. So why are you asking me? <laughs> I feel like they don't make out as much and again my whole sample size is this one tv show i feel like they don't make they're like joan does a lot of pecking but mm. i think she goes in it with a lot of the guys well she does a lot of what do you mean then how is it both she does a lot of pecking but then she goes in yeah well she goes in for the peck but it's not like oh like i feel like full out like making out that's like your teen years 20 years you know what i mean yeah. you're, like, you're like slob knobbing around and stuff but older people mm. they kind of keep it dry you know what i mean it's like a yeah. dry be cordial like plant one sister i think it's like maybe the making out is behind closed doors and maybe the fact that they know they're on national television they don't want to go at it but i have brought up the lack of making out this season and that i feel like if you're really starting to like develop a relationship there are some things that need to happen and it can only happen once in the fantasy suite like you're gonna have to kiss and get more intimate and i don't feel like they a are. bad kiss can take away i mean a bad kiss is an ick it's a major ick mm. you know you had like thomas on katie thurston season they they were making out and you could see her you know uh spanks and it was a whole rigmarole in here it's like we're not i'm not saying what we want we need to see joan spanks i'm just saying you know she's keeping it buttoned up okay i respect it i'm, I'm really gonna piss off a whole generation i'm gonna get people we make out more than you okay sure prove it send me a video <laughs> I mean, well, she, Joan did make out with Jordan, and that was my, I was shocked by that because I'm like, well, if he's the lowest on your list, whatever, maybe he's a good kisser, and that's why she, he made I it just to the feel, top four. When you're younger, you're pulling hair, you're doing this. When you're older, you're like, all right, let's, you break it, you buy it, you know? I didn't, I never knew that my last time making out at a bar was going to be my last time making out at a bar. Had I known, I would have done it a little bit longer. <laughs> You don't do that anymore. I'm married. When I when I first uh, made out with my wife, she fell into a bush on the way home. You know, there was like a bush. That's how side. drunk she was. Nah, I think it was her shoe. I think it was the, the <laughs> high heel. No. Oh, OK, good. <laughs> but yeah, oh, she fell you're... over because she was so blown yeah. away by your kiss. That's what it was. Yeah. She got lightheaded from the, from the old uh, power recap smooch. Yeah. So at the end of this date, um, he doesn't say he's falling for her. Instead, he says that it's worth trying. He's going to try. I love that. It's giving, um, it's giving, it's giving Marcus at the end of a uh, Jen season when everything he said, oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting you know there. The I'm getting it's there. Called, it's called the old college try. That's what I yeah. love. Look at the old college try, which yeah, essentially well. means mail it in. You always say like a relationship needs to be the dessert, not the main course. And when you get to this age bracket, you got so much other stuff going on. He's not going to cancel his like weekly, you know, part cheesy games with the boys so that he can hang out with her. You know, like you, they, they, these people are like set in their stones. They're like they're like mature rivers carved into the valley, you know. Jordan gives me like the energy that he would go and sit at a bar and like have beers with his friends, though. He's, he gives me young energy. Yeah, he's a Buffalo Wild Wing uh, happy hour kind of totally, guy. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And Joan is for sure appetizers at, uh, you know, Vanderpump. She's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I could see that. I was going to say Olive Garden. Well, I mean, give Joan some respect here. Come on. I'm sorry. That's well, that's where Reality Steve goes. I, I went to Olive Garden in honor of Steve, uh, and I, oh boy, that knocked my stomach for a loop. That is some garbage. Dude, food. I just went last month. My mom's birthday, we, we went out to Olive Garden for some reason, and we all got sick. Yeah. Well, it's the fettuccine. What is this? You know what yeah, I mean? I don't know. Just it's a lot. It does a number it on the cube. stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, moving over to the, the date that I think is the most important significant date, even Joan herself said this one is really important. 
Um, there's just like a completely different vibe here. I feel like this is a couple, boyfriend and girlfriend, getting serious versus the other people who seem like acquaintances who randomly peck sometimes. You could say that they are chock full of love. You would say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we saw the bowling date, it was so funny because they did they did have like teen angst energy. He was like not wanting anyone to go talk to his lady and she was like mm. curled up in her bowling shoes. And yeah. yeah, it really is the Joan and Chalk show and everybody else is just there. And I'm okay with it. Usually I get annoyed if I know... And again, I don't know, but usually I get annoyed if I know who the winner is this early on because like I want to figure it out. I want to be thrown off a little bit, but like I actually want chalk for her and I will be mad if he's not it. So I'm okay with what I'm seeing here. And I feel like they know that we know. And, you know, I, I mean, everyone will say they want somebody who takes the lead, who knows what they're doing. And Chalk says, I'm your first kiss and I'm going to be your last kiss. Now, he could be wrong, but going into it with that energy, it's like pursuing a pool of water with your hair on fire. That's what Chalk's doing. And that's, look, the way Chalk is so sort of intentional with his words. If he ever like looked me in the eyes and told me he was proud of me, I'd probably start crying. Like he's, yeah. when I talk about therapy and I talk about sort of, you know, seeing someone who looks like they're a good dad, Chalk is the definition of that. He he reminds me a little of Devin, not in the bad Devin way, but in the when we thought Devin was like what we saw on TV, it's a lot of the same stuff. Like he's the one putting himself forward. He's the one expressing himself to to Joan. And I feel like that's a lot of what Devin did as well. I mean, look, I don't know if you're trying to put me in a trap here or commenting about Devin. But yeah, I mean, I thought... Did it well, Did it work? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I wasn't one, I you know, I don't want to rewrite history, but I thought Devin got a bad rap until we heard all the other stuff, you know, because it's like, look, you know, yeah, go back to Jen. It's like, you know, it didn't work out, you know, but then, uh, whatever. It's a whole, I could do 50 hours on it. I'm just talking about solely de what Devin did on the actual show is a lot of what Chalk, Chalk is like the golden version of Devin, except I believe Chalk is authentic. If you told me Chalk was Blake Moyne's dad, I would go, yeah, I can see that. Really? You know yeah. I love Blake Moynes. I love Blake Moynes too. I've squeezed Blake very, I have, I have secrets with Blake Moynes. What? I, I, I introduced him to New York City for the first time. I what? showed him, I showed him how to do uh, McDougal Street the right way. Really? Boy, boy, can that man drink. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Mm. Blake Moynes, those Canadian hockey players are, but he's all, he's all good. He's all good. He, you know, he's, he's such good energy. His mom is and Chalk's got that. I don't know if it's golden retriever energy, yeah. but it's, it's, there's not a bad bone in their bodies. Yeah. I really liked how they incorporated Chalk's mom. I mean, taking into account that like she passed just weeks before this was filmed and they were still willing to like have all the camera crew come over and they had Joan participate in the planting of the oak tree. I actually thought was really, really cool. You know, when someone passes that I'm, I'm assuming she was in hospice. These are all assumptions. I don't know. I'm assuming her end of life was, a, was long. I mean, she had a caretaker. She's, you know, this is something that was planned. So that moment where she does pass, like, you know, I, I, my step, grandmother my stepdad's mom was similar where it was like so long and coming that when it happened it was more of a celebration like you had almost mourned who that person was and then you celebrated the passing and mm -hmm. yeah it's it's special that they shared that it's very delicate because i'm like oh boy here here they're gonna go exploiting this but i'm sure they were like hey we got to do a hometown we might as well like let's do something and you know, my wife was actually funny when Jones scooped the dirt, you know, the symbolic dirt scooping. My wife was like, oh, they're letting Jones scoop the dirt. You know, it's kind of like. I thought that too. Yeah. I was like, well, I liked that she was there and she was there to participate, but she actually like did some of the dirt. And I was like, you've literally never met with the woman. I mean, on one hand, I thought it was nice that like she probably felt very included. But on the other hand, you've never met her. Yeah. So I get what Tasha's saying. I'm sure they all did it. And she was last. They were like, come on, do it. And she's like, oh, all right, fine. And then that's the only one they show. But yeah, yeah you know, sweet planting a tree, you know, simple. In th that's the whole season, right? It's nothing crazy. It's very symbolic moments where 
you know, on the on the bachelor, you almost never talk about mortality. You never other than if someone had a tragic incident with their parent passing or whatever, but it just hits you in the face on Golden Bachelor. It's like, yeah, absolutely. Statistically, you're going to have 30 guys. Someone in their life is going to pass while you're filming, you know, mm -hmm. so they 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 I'll put it this way. This is the best compliment I can give the producers. They didn't mess it up this season. Yeah. And just these key moments, these, these, like I, I've been talking a lot about the edit and the way they edit the golden series versus the younger series. And they do cold opens. They show you something real emotional. They started, I think Gary's season with him putting his earpiece in, right. They'll mm -hmm. do a full like 20 seconds of someone quietly weeping. And I'm like, that is what's going to draw people in, not shouting and throwing a cake in a fire like this is what people want and are interested in. You see this a lot with commercials. Uh, you know, all these commercials, they boost the decibels and come on down, 50% off. And then you'll see a commercial that just goes silent. And then that silence starts to draw people back in. And it's like a completely different way of communicating. So mm -hmm. when the show does that in edit form, I think it's a real strong choice that you can't overlook because it's an intentional choice to say, we're going to let their stories do the heavy lifting. We're going to try to not get in the way. And then I think they did a good job with that. Do we know anything about the ratings? You know, it's on a different night. It's in the fall. So they're lower. <laughs> well, I, I heard they're garbage, but it's like, you yeah, gotta, I mean, at some point you have to try to make good content. And I feel like the people that are watching, it's good content. Now, the ratings don't matter too much to the last episode, because what happens is if something crazy goes down or it's a great ending, people talk, they'll rewatch it on Hulu. So this idea, I mean, like, like I said, it's election season. People's attentions are pulled in all different directions. It's not on its normal Monday night because of football. So yeah, no, the, the ratings are garbage versus the bachelor, you know, airs in January when there's literally nothing else on. Everyone's got a, you know, holiday hangover. They're staying home in the winter. You know, it's that's that's the best lead you can look for. So, no, I don't think the ratings are good. But I, I also don't think ABC really cares about the ratings with this show. It is like a reliable friend with benefits that they continue to call 20 seasons in a row because it puts out. And it fills a time slot. Also, this is extra, I think. Like, they have their staple seasons. And this is almost like a bonus. So I hear you on that. But I will say, if they want to make money and their ratings really are garbage, then I think they're going to be doing things for the next Golden Series. I, I would... This is my prediction that if we get a Golden Series in 2025... If Jones ratings are what they are, what you're saying they are, and they continue to be that way, I definitely think that they're going to change it because I don't, I think at the end of the day, ABC cares about their wallet and I don't, I don't know. know if they do. I mean, I understand like if no one's watching, no one's watching, but mm. they have all these other shows and, and it's kind of like a newspaper every day has to find an article to print. And it's like the sports mm. section every day, there's going to be a sports story. It's just reliable. So for two hours or 90 minutes a week out of like at least half the year, they've now got four different shows that they get to play some do better than others but you know who it's not just the bachelor they also go on uh, good morning america they go on dancing with the stars the whole synergy the whole sort of like ecosystem of abc is not just what one rating says you know mm -hmm. so i mean i think i think that it's just one of those things it won't be going away. And when you look at it, it's not the guy's fault. These guys were fantastic this year. The oh, yeah. that they had was so rich and so heartwarming. You might want to consider how you film the guys moving forward and in and, and the ladies where you go. All right. The show is about finding love. But what they should be analyzing now is in a world of matriarchs and patriarchs, people that for the last 30, 40 years, they became mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers. Everyone relied on them, their sons, their their, fa their daughter-in-laws. And then all of a sudden, they have a peer to hang out with again. They haven't hung out with guys, you know, in some cases since high school football. They're, the camaraderie is so mm -hmm. rich that when you watch them just all hug and love on each other, there's got to be a more story to tell there. I hear you. I just think I have um, a differing opinion. I just think that I am someone that gravitates more towards the end of Jen season and how messy that was and how, I mean, D Dave, you're a YouTuber. 
Did you make more money covering the end of Jen's season or the Golden Bachelorette? Oh, I bought a second mansion. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we we like the kids got braces now. No, <laughs> you're right. I mean, it's those are if it bleeds, it leads. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't eat dessert for every course. You know, you have to have like you want to have you know, something that dramatic that happens. You want to have the Katie and Greg moment. You want to have the discussion of did someone, you know, you want that. You're hung up but, on Katie's season. I well, Lots I mean, of Katie examples. Well, how, how many other examples are since, I mean, her season was such highly rated from a mess standpoint, but mm. that's because there was a lot of like, you know, this like divide and maybe it was because of the pandemic. You can look at Claire as well. I mean, Tasha, you know, there was a lot that came from those seasons, Hannah Brown season, you know, so much came from it, but not all of it right away. Uh, a lot of what came yeah. out of that was what happens after the show's over. Oh, Kate, you know, Hannah Brown's going to go out with Tyler and, you know, yeah. it, but so I think we don't know how it's going to end. Uh, whatever drama gets you to the end. But there have been seasons where, you know, Steve will spoil a season and you go, all right, that doesn't sound too crazy. And then, and when then you something watch, crazier happens. You know, Gabby from Zach's season, you know, he, he kissed and told from the fantasy suite. That was kind of crazy. And, you know, mm -hmm. she, you know, there were, so you just, you just never know what's going to come at the very end. And we're still like the soup's still in the pot right now. So yeah. I don't think so, we're going to get that crazy on her season though. But I don't, I don't think the Golden Bachelor is going to give us that crazy anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I guess with Gary, we got some crazy stuff at the end with like the Leslie breakup. And for me, like I thought Leslie had it in the bag like the whole time. I was really shocked by that. And uh, so that was a little bit. But I guess like, yeah, his season wasn't really dramatic either. I don't know what it was. I feel well, like we this saw season's in the just preview, been different. We saw in the preview, Pascal might be a Leslie type from what we saw in the preview. You know, get, getting the cameras away. They were yeah. kind of, you know, he wasn't having it. He was kind of done. So every yeah. season has the, you know, the the episode where they rip the mic pack, pack off and they want to jump over a fence or whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. but, you know, but but there is a reserved nature to this older generation that's like they ain't they're not necessarily trying to be influencers. So yeah. they're not like this is what I hate so much about the the sort of new realm of Bachelor is you can everyone's got a sound bite. Everyone shows up to to the mental all as an audition. Mm -hmm. And like, I get it. You want the sound bite, but sell it to me. Don't make it look like you're just trying to sell your T-shirt. And it's like when it's there, it's there. When there's a great conversation to be had. Great. And I think it's telling they don't do the men tell all women tell all for the golden franchise. They, right. They did. They did it for Gary. So I think there's. Yeah. Remember when Chris Jenner was on it? Chris Jenner know. gave like a shout out to Susan. Yeah, I, I guess I black these things out. I'm so sick. Yeah, of no, it was a good time. No, I liked it. I see. I want. I want a mental all. I see. I like men, mental all is probably one of my favorite episodes, and hometowns is one of my least because I like the mental all because they're all together again and they're bringing up the key points that maybe we're gonna discuss, like what really went down. And I like that more. I think that's more interesting than meeting four separate families who I don't actually know. Oh, and yeah, I have no, no connections to these people, you know? You brought me on for the worst episode, Hometown. I'm, I didn't do that on purpose. I remember I thought it was supposed to be last week, and then it Home, wasn't. Hometowns could be a tweet, you know what I mean? But no, it's it's kind of like... <laughs> yeah, a, this could have been an email. It's a necessary... Tell me that Jordan went home. Yeah, it's a necessary link to the... You can't just go straight to fantasy suites. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting, you know? I don't know what their, their rules are going to be, but, um, you know... Is Joan going to have them in bed by six? You know, are they early risers? You know, well, who knows? I'm sure she's going to do three fantasy suites and like whether or not they sleep in the same bed or whatever is on them. We'll see. We'll see. Or we won't see if they close the door. But they are headed to Tahiti. And yeah, next week is apparently when we see it looks like Joan has some type of ceremony with Pascal. And then she brings up again how she's like not sure if she's ready again. And that see the way they edited it, at least, is that they're trying to make it seem like he gets mad about that. But who the hell knows? I want to you know what I want to know? Do you know what ocean Tahiti is in? Because I no. love that you didn't know where Lake Tahoe was. It, there's four oceans. Do you know which one it's in? Let me Atlantic, see. Atlantic. Uh, I'll give you. Is yeah, it, don't it, don't tell me the Pacific? oceans. I'll give you one or one of the two. Atlantic or Pacific. Yeah. OK. Tahiti is a French Polynesian island nation. That means nothing to me. I'm going to say Atlantic. <laughs> is it Atlantic? 
No. It's in the South Pacific. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. But it's actually not that not that far from Los Angeles. I think it's only a six hour flight. It's I it's kind of like the Hawaii of the South Pacific, not the North Pacific. Oh. But anyway, I I when I studied in France, I had a French Polynesian roommate. Yeah. Shout out to Ode. Uh, but Tahiti's beautiful. And now Pascal's going to be there. And it's, of course, they speak French in Tahiti. And, oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, they have the Tahitian Frank or whatever the hell they do. They do baguettes and coconuts. I have no idea. But it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So based on what you've seen, I know you you co- you did cover spoilers, so I don't want you to be swayed. But based on what you've seen on the show, who do you think is going home next? You know, that's tough. I, I honestly... Like I said, I cover these spoilers, but I do them so long ago that the names didn't stick with me. Um, I I see it's tough. I don't want to answer. I don't want to okay, answer. Actually, as you were about to answer, I'm like, I really don't want him to answer because I feel like if you say guys going home, I'm going to then flip and now think that Pascal's in the top two. And I, and I don't I think, think guys. That. At, I think guys at catch. Jones worry that he might not be that into her. I, I mean, look. Guy? Don't you mean I Pascal? Just, no, both of them. I see them both dating way younger. I just see them as the type to drive a Lambo and go pick up some chicks. That's what I see it as. Joan is hot. Why are you? The, I'm why, not saying Joan's she's a not. Catch. I'm saying men are dirt balls. And when that you're is like true. 60 year old retired ER doctor, take a poll. I bet you they're all with some like, you know, tan Florida. 48 year old you know what i mean I'm sure just, well i haven't seen the poll results but maybe we I'm should do a poll. i got an old millennial <laughs> i'm with an old millennial and we're happy but i'm just saying you don't just you don't you know unless he's uh you know may, maybe prove me wrong guy you know we'll, we'll see yeah you know, prove come, me wrong gee come back to this in one year i'm gonna be watching these guys like a hawk and i'm gonna be like see there it was they're hanging yeah. out at the atlantic tahiti and uh doing their thing <laughs> well Thank you, Dave, for joining me for this recap, filling Jackie's shoes. Um, can you tell our listeners where they can keep up with you? I will. What I love about you is after we're done, you're going to text me going, was that terrible? Should we redo it? That's exactly what you're going to say. And no, I'm, I'm going to venture to tell you this is the best one, unless you don't like me. And you'll probably get people that don't, but that's fine. They're probably my family. But uh, you can find me. I actually launched today my new Instagram for the podcast, The Rush Hour with Dave Neal. And oh, really? I do, I do twice daily. So I get all the up to date news, 25 minute episodes, bite sized content. And uh, no one suggested going twice daily, and you shouldn't, but I do. So, um, yeah, that's what I got. I'll give you a good shout out on my channel because I, really, I really love She's All Batch. Uh, I think your uh, partner is fantastic, and I think you are too. You guys are great together when you're not Thank ditching you. me in Vegas. And uh, oh my God. I will, uh, I'll never forget, um, you know, seeing you guys hungover. Very, very good moment in my life. Uh, I was trying to think, do I have any dirt on you? I don't think I do. I'm squeaky clean. I didn't well, get I was, you didn't throw up. You didn't get hung over. No, I you did st- try to meet us for brunch and you got like lost or something, I think. No, that was an excuse. I wasn't even I wasn't coming near you guys. You guys took like a $50 cab away from where we were. I was like, you're on your own, sister. Yeah, we went like we just drank all day that day, that infamous day. What um, a day. Yeah, it really was. Now, did you are you going to go to his 50th party? Uh, yeah, I want to. Yeah, it's going to be a big deal. I'll be there. I just, you know, I just hope that, um, you know, yeah, the cast of the Valley isn't swinging by because then I won't see you. But well, hopefully not. Then I'll be with you guys all night. <laughs> so all right. Excited. Well, thank you, Dave. And um, we'll see you on. Well, we're on YouTube now. So if you're going to give me a plug, give it on YouTube. We're, we're blowing up. Did you see we have like 3000 subscribers? Wow. Look at you. Yeah. Hashtag my name and steal my people. They love you. Anyone who okay. loves me. They love you. There's no no questions about it. All right. Well, thank you, Dave. Um, you have to fill Jackie's role. So I'm going to ask you, is that it? And you're going to say, I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Is that it? I think that's it. Bye, bitches. Bye.